we'll start by seeing four important points. First, this is a centromere attached to one chromatid. This is a chromosome. This is another centromere attached to two sister chromatids. This is also a chromosome. So irrespective of the number of chromatids the centromere is attached to, it's considered a chromosome. Second, the DNA content of a cell is represented by the letter C, small c. Third, the number of complete sets of chromosomes contained in a cell is M. Now the most important thing, in one cell, in any cell of a, of a human, we represent the DNA content as 2C and the number of complete sets of chromosomes as 2N. Now remember, all of our cells except the gametes are diploid and all of the diploid cells are represented as having 2C and 2N amount of DNA and chromosomes. Of course, these are this is applicable only for our cells with uh, ploidy of 2. Now we have 23 pairs of chromosomes in each cell, meaning we have 46 chromosomes and we represent this as 2N. Okay, 2N is the number of complete sets of chromosomes. 2N is representing our 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now we move on to the phases of mitosis, phases of the cell cycle leading up to mitosis to the production of daughter cells. So if you've seen the previous video on cell cycle in embryology B6-2, you must be knowing that the phases of cell cycle can be divided into interphase and M phase followed by cytokinesis. So interphase is made up of G1, S and G2. The M phase in this case which is mitosis is made up of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and then it's followed by cytokinesis which is cytoplasmic division of the cell followed by the production of daughter cells. So we're going to see how much DNA and how many chromosomes the cell has in each of these phases and how the ploidy is maintained after mitosis. So in G1, I've drawn two uh, chromosomes, but this is to represent the 46 chromosomes, okay? So when we're starting cell division, this has 2C amount of DNA and 2N amount of chromosomes, 2N number of complete sets of chromosomes. So we have 46 chromosomes, okay? And the amount of genetic material or DNA is 2C. Now in S phase, there is replication of DNA, meaning the content has doubled. But as you can see here, this is one chromosome, this is another chromosome. Even though the chromatids have replicated, they are still attached at the same centromere. So the number of chromosomes is the same as G1 but the amount of content has doubled so the amount of content now would be 2 into 2c so we have 4c amount of dna and the number of chromosomes is same so we have 2n amount of chromosomes in g2 nothing significant happens with regards to the dna so it's still 4c and 2n in prophase no significant changes so 4c and to win. Now remember, even though I'm drawing the chromosomes this way, the visible chromosomal condensation is not uh, appreciable until prophase. In these three phases, you cannot see the chromosomes as clearly as I've drawn here, okay? So don't assume that this is how it appears in each of the phases. This is just for representation so that you can understand how many chromosomes and how much DNA is in each phase of mitosis. Now coming to metaphase. Metaphase, again, the same as prophase, nothing else happens except that they are aligned at the metaphase plate. So, 4C, 2N again. In anaphase, if you remember the last uh, video on mitosis, the spindles from the centrosome, they start uh, separating the chromosomes to create two equal halves for the future daughter nuclei. So now, each chromosome has been split into two. So we have twice the number of chromosomes as before, but the amount of DNA is the same. 
no replication has taken place nothing has happened we have the same number same amount of dna as we had from s phase but this each chromosome has been split into half so the number of chromosomes has doubled but the amount of content is the same so dna content is the same the amount of chromosomes has multiplied by 2 so it's equal to 4n in telophase it's the same thing you just have the nuclear envelope forming again otherwise everything is the same so 4c and 4n now even though in telophase two nuclei are formed this is not considered as two separate cells because the cytoplasm is still intact it has not divided yet so this is all belonging to the same cell even though they are in different nuclei even though there are two nuclei we consider it to be a part of the single cell part of a single cell so 4c and 4n in cytokinesis the cell will undergo division a furrow will appear it will cleave the cell and we'll have two daughter cells so here we have two daughter cells this information 4c and 4n has been split into half so each daughter cell receives half of that half of that information so we have 2c and 2n 2c 2n so we started out with 2c and 2n amount of information we started out with a chromosome with one chromatid at the end of mitosis the ploidy has been maintained and we have the same type of same amount of uh, chromosomes okay so we have 2c and 2n so these are the four things that you always need to keep in mind whether it's with regards to mitosis or meiosis if you remember this it's more than enough and you will be able to work this all out on your own